All right. Hello, my name is Kristen Kayla, Health Promotion Consultant with HealthNet. Today's guest speaker is Katie Keckman with ShareCare, and the webinar topic is financial well-being. All lines have been muted to avoid background noise. If you have any questions throughout this presentation, please feel free to chat me and I'll try to respond as quickly as I can. And this is uh, being recorded, so I hope to send out the recording link tomorrow. Next slide, please. And we always start off the presentation with a disclaimer. This information provided in this presentation is intended for the general information of the audience. It is not medical advice and shall not replace consultation with your physician or other qualified health provider. If you have any health-related questions or problems, please seek the advice of your physician or other qualified health provider. Katie, I'll hand the baton oh. over to you now. Oh, that's okay. We'll get to those slides <laughs> in a little bit, but I'll hand the baton over to you. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time today. I look forward to your presentation. Thank you, Kristen. And Hello, everybody. Um, so welcome to our financial well-being, where to start workshop. And today's conversation is going to get into something that many of us don't openly talk about with a lot of people, finances. It can definitely be a taboo topic, but in my opinion, um, or it is my opinion that the more that we talk about it, the more educated we become and the more planning we can do to ensure a comfortable financial future, the better. And so as Kristen mentioned, I'll be leading our time together today. And if you have not had the opportunity of joining one of our ShareCare webinars, I just wanted to let you know that we have elevated our webinar experience to include expert video content and interactive activities and of course group discussion so as mentioned you know i encourage participation since you are all on mute you can just type in the chat and i'll read it aloud you're going to notice uh periods of playing of me playing and pausing the presentation as we watch uh various video snippets and then engage in conversation together so just to start So displayed on the screen is our agenda for today, and we have several objectives for today's workshop. First, we're going to hear from two experts at the Financial Health Network about financial advice that they would have given to their younger selves. And I really like this exercise because while you might not be able to change what your younger self did, you can certainly make changes to your current life because the advice still applies. And you'll also be able to help help others sharing your advice. And the experts are meant to give you some inspiration, but I do want you to think um, think deeply about your personal financial well being for this one, and maybe some advice that you would give to your younger self. And I'd love to hear from that after we go through that video. And then after that exercise, we're going to hear about seven smart ways to save each day and discuss how to cope with financial stress. And to think about the concept that money doesn't buy happiness. Rather, it's about the importance of prioritizing what does bring you joy. So let's go ahead and get started with our first video segment with uh, hearing about the advice that um, they would give to them their younger selves. don't leave money on the table. I didn't get started putting money away for retirement as soon as I could. And I really think that's a missed opportunity because with an employer match to the amount that I could contribute, that's free money. Um, and so if you, if I could have just kind of gotten started earlier, really tried to work with my HR team to get through the paperwork and not be as intimidated by it, I would have been able to save so much more just by getting started a little bit earlier. It probably would have been to take a little bit more time to think about my what my expenses would look like when I owned a home. And I might have bought a slightly smaller home because the thing I didn't realize, and I think a lot of new homeowners don't realize, is how many extra expenses there are once you become a homeowner. Utilities, taxes, 
home improvements, repairs, water bills, it just goes on and on. And so even as someone that is in the business of financial health, I probably didn't quite understand or estimate how much those costs were going to be. And while I'm doing okay, it does make it a little hard at the end of the month to save for college and save for the retirement. And I think if I had been a little bit more planful at the beginning, I might have been a little more set up to save for those things that also really matter to me. And that's hard to do, but I think if you look back, you can make some better choices like that. Okay, so we heard from Heidi and Richard at Financial Health Network about their uh, advice to their, their financial well-being uh, advice to their younger selves. And Heidi stated that she wouldn't leave money on the table and would have gotten started saving earlier, while Richard would have looked at his expenses in detail before making a big purchase. Does anybody want to share what advice they would give to their younger self? And while I'm waiting for responses, I'll share mine um, while you brainstorm or type in the chat. So personally, I would have taken advantage of educational opportunities to learn about finances. And this wasn't something that was given in high school or college, unless you specifically were studying finance, like a finance related degree. But there were opportunities available. And even during my first year in college, there was an opportunity to meet with financial advisors or listen to webinars that I never attended because my financial health just kind of always overwhelmed me. It was just something I didn't know much about. But learning how to spend, save, and invest would have been a way for me to overcome this sense of anxiety sooner. So does anybody want to share? Um, look at the responses. Someone said, I agree with that. I would have taken a course when all I had to do was go to a class. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you for relating. Contribute to your 401k. That's a good one. I'm not sure I would buy a house if I could do it all over again. Save early. Learn how to deduct taxable income. Budgeting. These are really great responses. Save, save, save. <laughs> Absolutely. I wish I had started to save for retirement. Now that the time is getting closer, I'm worried. I would have contributed more earlier. My son at age 19 heard from a coworker to start after a tax, or my son at age 19 heard from a coworker to start after, to start a after tax Roth. And he did, he's 21 now and plans on not touching it until retirement. Oh my gosh, good for him, that's amazing. I would have learned more about the impact of my credit score. You don't really need that, someone says. Um, oh, sorry, I'm getting more comments. And just in the interest of time, and I'll come back, I'm going to move forward. But I'm um, so sorry if I didn't get to your comment. I, If I have extra time afterwards, I will come back. Um, and that might be something that you, someone asked what happens to our pension if we're released from our job. And personally, I can't answer that. So um, if Either Kristen or you want to talk to your HR or um, Kristen wants to respond to that at some point um, or in the chat and just let you know somebody did ask that. Um, would have worked in a job with proper retirement benefits. Well, thank you so much for your thoughtful responses. Um, all, all really good um, and, and good advice. So thank you for sharing your perspective and advice on this topic. So I'm gonna move into a discussion um, on the screen. So now on the screen, we have a few more discussion questions. This time around, it's about shopping for groceries. As the price of groceries continues to increase, think about these questions to help create and stick to a grocery budget each week or month. So would anybody like to share their answers to these questions or wanna share any, any advice or share how you save on groceries? So do you shop or use a shopping list, buy in bulk or use coupons? Why or why not? And what's the average amount of food dollars you spend a month? If anyone wants to share, just think about it. You can also j jot things down on your computer or in a journal and make note of it. Someone said, I write my grocery list out on paper and then I leave it on the kitchen table. Oh no, but it's good that you got the first step. Now you just got to bring it with you. I base my list on what is on sale for perishable goods. That's a really great tip. Thank you. 
Shop for your pantry freezer first. I use coupons. Ooh, lots of really good advice. Sorry, I keep getting comments. So the screen is moving or the back, the chat box. I base my, oh, sorry, I already read that one. Do, do, do. I use a shopping list. I don't use coupons because I don't know where I can find them. Usually grocery stores, they even have apps for grocery stores um, or, um, yeah, if other people use coupons and they want to share how to get coupons. I do order pickup, less compulsive buying, looking in the store and using coupons. All of the above when going into Costco, having a list and not diverting from it. I hit up Target Circle sales and Sprouts 20% frozen or vitamin sales. Buying in bulk and using coupons gives you a false sense that you're saving, but you actually end up costing you more because you buy the quote unquote deal that you didn't really need or want, that you didn't need or want. I don't accept for a shopping list, but now that I'm retiring, I need to budget and use a list and stick with it. I used to eat out a lot, but now I do Trader Joe's and Costco. Yes, I Trader Joe's to me, around me, is the most affordable way to get organic um, or health, health food items. So I do a, most of my shopping at Trader Joe's and I love it. And I also like the Trader Joe's seasonal foods too. Okay, well, lots of good comments. Again, um, just in the interest of time, if I have more time, I will come back. But thank you so much for participating and sharing all of your thoughtful advice. Um, I'll just read one more. Um, my, the last one I got, we plan a meal, buy only what we need and use what we have around it. I make pasta sauce and freeze it, buy a rotisserie chicken and make it go for at least two different meals. Also use store apps and coupons. Beautiful. That's really great. Thank you so much. So in addition to groceries, there's many ways to save each and every day. Our next segment is gonna look at small adjustments that can lead to big financial results. So I'm gonna allow you to read these tips to yourself. There's gonna be words on the screen, but no talking, but we'll come back together as a group afterwards to discuss. Okay, so we just saw some great ways to save. And most of these tips just require a little bit of effort and planning, but they can result in some, some, some substantial changes, especially if you work on multiple saving efforts at one time. So here on the screen, and you can take a screenshot if you would like, as a reminder, some seven, or seven of the ways that we just learned about to save every day. So first, as many of you mentioned in the chat box, 
Create a budget. Creating a budget can help you recognize how you spend your money and also be able to identify areas where you can cut back. Also, you can set up automatic payments and savings so that you avoid late fees, missed payments, and any unnecessary expenses. Automatic payments can put your money away so you'll be less tempted to spend it. Also adopt the 24 hour rule. If you see something that you wanna buy, I've definitely have become good at this where I, I'm like, if I think about it and that you know necklace or sweater or whatever it is, I make myself wait 24 hours uh, just to avoid emotional impulse purchases. So it's like, I really have to want it. Also unsubscribe. So less marketing emails can mean more money in your pocket. Brown bag your lunch. So try to cook your meals at home and bring your lunches to work more often. Eating out can really add up and it is very expensive overall. So, and especially if that's like how you're primarily eating or you're going out very often. Try to set a goal and maybe that's, uh, you know, eating out just once or twice a week, whatever makes sense for you in your financial situation, but eating out less often will help you save money. Plan ahead. So as again, many of you mentioned, um, plan ahead, don't go shopping without having a list. So again, avoiding those impulse buys, plan your meals in advance. And buy only the ingredients that you'll need for your pre-planned weekly meals. And that can help, help you stick to your budget. And then lastly, save with purpose. So think of your why. Why are you saving? Maybe it's to save for college for your kids or be able to take a nice vacation, buy a house, or be able to retire and be comfortable. Having a purpose will help you meet your goals and it allow you to be able to stick to your plan. Is anyone currently participating in any of these saving methods? And if so, how have you benefited from it? Or do you want to share, you know, are there any new suggestions um, that are not on the screen that you have started implementing into your daily life? Um, brown bag lunches. I don't know how much you should set budgets for all the different things like groceries, home expenses, retirement investments, travel. Is there a certain percentage of your salary? That's a really good question. And um, I think meeting with a financial advisor um, or um, using some of your benefits resources with that might be helpful. Um, but I think it, it's very individual. And um, I do think it's important to obviously live within your means, but I don't know a percentage of your salary that you should set. Because again, I do think that everyone has different lifestyles and preferences and it is and it is really personal on how much you set aside for what and how much you're comfortable, you know, living off of. Automatic payment, someone said, I share, I created a spreadsheet with my expenses. Oh, sorry, I can comment and I appreciate them. And it's just moving the screen. Number two and number seven, I bring my lunch to work every day. Once a month, I'll allow myself to go out to out to lunch. Good for you. For me, it's been huge to consider renting and downsizing what I need as I try to save for a career change. The payoff will be great when I change. Well, good luck to you. Auto savings, eat a dinner, eat at home dinner, and making lunch has saved me a lot. Making lists for grocery stores and do not shop hungry. Yes, I think that's a really great suggestion. Do, do, do. Sorry. Yes, I meal plan. I have a budget and I do the 24 hour rule. I actually give myself a week before purchasing. Ooh, good for you. I have a budget and I make it a habit to write down everything I spend each day. At the end of the month, I compare them. My overages always seem caffeine and restaurant related. I can relate to that. So I definitely agree with that. But then also we will talk about happiness and I kind of rationalize my Starbucks coffee or, um, you know, the, my treats as it's a, for my emotional well-being. So, um, you know, we're all make trade-offs and so awesome. Well, thank you for your thoughtful comments. Again, I'm in the interest of time going to move forward, but I appreciate all your comments and I will come back. 
um, if I have extra time. So now we're gonna switch gears a bit and learn what financial stress is, what the causes are and how to cope with financial worries. Again, there's gonna be words on the screen with no talking, but we'll recap afterwards. So the last video clip was pretty heavy and it described how the cost of living is increasing and finances have a lot of power over our mental well-being and it can cause a lot of worry, anxiety, stress, and even depression. But there is hope and experts gave the following suggestions uh, with regards to dealing with your financial anxiety. So for couples working together, they recommend communicating and being specific about what you want and how you're going to achieve it. Spending money wisely, but not depriving yourselves of the things that are good for your mental health. Like I said, my coffee. And finally, seeking professional help. So this could be through a financial advisor, taking a free class at the Association for Financial Counseling and Planning Education or working with a financial therapist to understand your relationship with money. Um, is anyone willing to share if they've ever taken any of these steps towards working on their financial future and maybe how it's benefited them or maybe something that you plan to do? Reading these videos is causing me a lot of anxiety. Words are going too fast, hard with my particular neurodiversity mix. I'm Sorry to hear that. Um, I, so if you do miss anything, just know that I did recap um, the main points afterwards. I haven't yet, but I plan to with Fidelity for retirement. That's great. Use digital apps such as Libby for free digital books magazines instead of purchasing non-reference physical books. And I didn't just FYI, you said leave a few more seconds in, slide, in between the slides. Um, so I, I can take that back to our video team, but I did not create the videos. So, but again, just to ensure in case you do miss something or you, when we have a video like that, I do always cover what was shown on the screen after. I borrow books from the library often to save money. I think that's a really great suggestion. Thank you so much. Okay, so we're gonna do a couple. All right. So if you here on the screen, um, just things to think about. If you haven't already begun thinking about your finances, making a plan is a great way to start. And here are some questions questions for you to begin thinking about. So how are you going to save? 
How much are you going to save? When are you going to save? And what are you saving for? And these are very personal questions, so I don't think we need to answer these as a group. But feel free to take a, a picture or a screenshot here and start answering these questions to outline your plan and most importantly, your goals. So what are you saving for? Knowing what you want is a vital aspect to maintain your motivation in saving. And in our final video clip today, we're going to hear from Elizabeth White, who is a Harvard MBA, former retail entrepreneur and C-suite executive who landed in a position of long-term unemployment. And she wrote an essay about this experience and received a plethora of stories from others in similar situations which helped inspire her to write a book. And it's called 55 Unemployed and Faking Normal. She's gonna give us five great tips for looking at work differently, downsizing while still, still meeting our needs and being open to non-traditional living situations while still allowing yourself to spend money on what makes you happy. I openly embrace this stage of life. And you, you have to do it, you have to fight a little bit to do it because there's so much coming at us that says we should be invisible now. We should get off the stage now. We should sit down now. And so I wanna be one of those voices that shows that you can actually be doing something else. I graduated from Harvard Business School. I've worked at the World Bank. I've had my own uh, business. So it's been quite a journey. Half, easily close to half of the people who are now 55 have not set aside enough to retire. Who they are, We're looking at a situation where a lot of the people who are now 55, by the time they get to 65, could be in poverty or near poverty situation. So my advice and what I'm learning is, I have the expression, I say sometimes, I have to get off my throne. I try to pull together what I call a casserole of interesting work. And some of it I don't like, but some of it where I can, that's the, the focus, because I know that at my age, I'm 68 now, that the likelihood of me getting a nine to five, you know, sort of traditional job is unlikely. How do I, what I call small up, so downsizing in a way where I am clear about what I need to feel grounded and supported, how do I think in terms of living, maybe there are a group of women living golden girl style. If we don't start kind of making that more normal, then your money is not going to go very far at all. You know, different people, we're going to have different things that make us feel like, okay, this is my happiness. I'm a big flower person. That's my happiness. Somebody said, why would you buy flowers? Because that for me is something that beauty, I feel supported by that. I really love how the speaker asks us to look at unconventional opportunities. So trying out different jobs, living with friends in an older age, he said golden age or, or golden girl style. And most importantly, spending money on what makes you happy. And that's kind of where I said, you know, everybody has, it, it's just so personal on what you're spending your money on and where you're saving and how much. So happiness is such an important aspect of our life, especially your health. So Let's look at some of these questions on the screen to dig a little bit deeper into finances and happiness. So how do you increase your happiness separate from your finances? And I'll share, I have a self-care routine full of tools and habits that bring me joy and make me happy and relieve my stress that do not involve spending money um, or you know, much at all, if, if any. 
And there's an oh, opening up the comments. So be respectful to money. Is there a slide with all five tips and the book? Um, no, there is not, but it um I will give takeaways from the presentation at the end. There'll be a final slide that you can screenshot. Someone said, I love to volunteer. It's free and it makes me grateful for what I have. That's a really great idea. And that's so good for your well being and stress management. If an auto payment does not process and I get hit with a late fee, I always call to get it credited back. That's happened to me once in a while, but I get that money back. I take a mindfulness class that's free. I took a business course that addressed the familial and emotional relationship to money that was invaluable. Oh, thank you for sharing that. Saving for large purpose purposes instead of getting a loan or credit, choosing purchases that fit within my budget. Sorry, I think that was maybe to an earlier question. Riding my bike, getting involved in community, DIY. I love my AMC A-list subscri sub subscription. I can see three movies a week in any format without huge um, charges. One movie in the month pays for it. I also volunteer. Those are all amazing. Thank you for sharing. I do, I teach yoga. And so I do a lot of yoga for my mental and emotional and physical health. And I'm trying to teach myself how to play guitar now. And that is very stimulating and challenging and has brought me a lot of joy. I only charge what I can pay off each month. I also do that. That's a really great suggestion. Thank you for that. Does anyone want to share? How do you cope with how finances negatively affect you? So personally, I go back to the basics and just dial it back. So prioritizing my saving, even in smaller ways, like those tips we were given, like eating out less, sticking to my budget, um, doing at home or free dates with my friends or partner. And I use my stress management tools and things in my wheelhouse that I know work to relieve my stress, like that are, you know, in, inexpensive or free, like deep breathing, yoga, calling a friend, things like that, journaling. I'm just waiting if anyone has any more comments. And then um, lastly, how can you instill happiness separate from finances in your friends and family? If anyone wants to share. I want to make a vision board that I can see every day to motivate me to save. That's a beautiful idea. I love that. Doing things for them. Yes. I may get the recording of this because I cannot join for the whole presentation. Yes, you. There is. this is being recorded. So wonderful. Let's wrap up with our takeaways from today's workshop. So I'm going to show the screen. And again, feel free to screenshot when you also will get a recording. And especially for our the participant that asked about a list of the five things that were covered in the video and what she said, you can always revisit the recording as well. So for the takeaways from today's workshop, it's never too early or too late to get financially healthy. You can always check out your employee benefits plan and explore the resources that you have available to you, no matter where you are in your planning. Know where your finances stand at all times. Keep track of your money, make a budget each month, and stick to it. Save, save, save. Set money in your savings account each month and don't touch it unless there's an absolute need. This will get you closer to achieving whatever your personal goals are. So again, like buying a home, college education, retirement, or even a nice vacation. And breaking the bank won't make you happy. So focus on the things that will. So at this time, I'll open up the discussion for any questions, comments, or thoughts that you'd like to share before we wrap up the presentation. Thank you so much for joining today. I hope this webinar has inspired you to begin enhancing your financial health and well-being. I will turn it over to um, Kristen to share your health net resources. So 
So um, recommended size of emergency fund, three months or six months. I think anything that you can save, I think, you know, the more the better, but I think definitely having a three months is um, important. What is a good percentage of your home to save each month or payday? I heard 15% of your take home. Um, personally, like I, I don't know the percentage and I would work with a financial advisor on that. I have not heard a, or I, I am not an expert and I do not know the percentage. Again, I think it's a very personal and like how much you can comfortably live off of. Um, and again, different things, like everyone has different tastes and personal preferences and things that, that make them happy. So would be comfortable with a different amount left over um, and, and feel comfortable with a different amount of savings each month. So, and again, it depends on like what your health issues are and like what your, you know, the rest of your situation. There's just so many different variables that I don't think it's a straightforward blanket percentage for everybody. Another tip, every time we get a pay increase, I funnel it all to my retirement account. Oh, that's so smart. Thank you for sharing that. All right, I will turn it over to Kristen. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, Katie, so much for your time today. This information was very helpful. And I appreciate you sh sharing these slides here. The next few slides you may have seen before, so I will just go over them quickly here. So as a HealthNet member, you have access to many health and wellness resources, such as your personal profile, real age test, health coaching programs on weight management, nutrition, tobacco cessation, exercise, tr stress management, and more. And I'll go over some of these in more detail in the next few slides. All right, thank you so much. So the real age test is a health assessment that takes about 20 minutes to complete. It's really the first place to start when members log into healthnet.sharecare.com. Members will receive their real age test or the real age versus their calendar age, which is calculated based on a variety of information that members input into the key areas of wellness within the real age test. It's really a measure of how behaviors, conditions, mental wellness and finances like we talked about today and social interactions impact your calendar age. So as members make lifestyle changes, the real age test can be taken again, so more than once, to see how these changes have impacted the real age score. So the report can be downloaded and it can even be shared with your physician, which is really nice. Next slide, please. So we offer health coaching. So once enrolled, members 18 years and older can contact a health coach at any time. The health coach reaches out to the member to set up an appointment at the end of each coaching call. And coaching is available through a variety of ways, including mobile, web, telephone, online chat, and secure messaging. And coaching is available to the eight areas of health listed there on your screen. Next slide, please. All right, craving, craving to Quit Tobacco Cessation Program is designed to help members who are ready to quit to permanently break their addiction to tobacco. Um, it's a 21 day program, which teaches awareness of cravings and habits to help participants quit smoking or vaping for, get, for good. So there's um, daily tracking, there's in the moment exercises for acute cravings, there's in-app coaching and live video coaching, a supportive online community and more. So it's a really great program. Next slide, please. Okay, so the Eat Right Now program is an evidence-based program that combines neuroscience and mindfulness tools to help members identify eating triggers and write out those cravings to change their eating patterns for good. So with the help from videos, exercises, members will learn to listen to their body's hunger signals so they know the difference between real hunger and emotional cravings. So this program is 28 days, 
and it lets members reshape how they eat in about 10 minutes a day. So through video, audio, and animated lessons and exercises, on-demand tools, members will learn how to identify and work with and eliminate their eating triggers. So it's a really great program. So if you're a member, please check that out. Next slide, please. All right. Unwinding by Share Care. This is a digital program based on mindfulness. It helps members deal with stressful events and build resilience and develop a more focused, aware, and mindful approach to life and work. Um, Unwinding offers on-demand in-the-moment tools to ease stress throughout the day. So some key, key features include um, mini courses, exercise tools, expert support, um, it's a really great program. And this is available to HealthNet members and non-HealthNet members. So there are links on the screen there for um, HealthNet members and non-HealthNet members if you would like to um, check out this program. Next slide, please. All right, healthy discounts. Who doesn't love a good discount? So we offer our HealthNet members discounts to weight management programs such as Weight Watchers, chiropractic, acupuncture services, and more, uh, discounts to eye care, hearing aids and screenings, fitness clubs, and more. So please check that out at healthnet.com if you're a HealthNet member. Next slide, please. We also offer online health challenges. So there's a variety of health challenges through our wellness platform. The ongoing uh, monthly challenges include stress, sleep and steps and they're available to everyone so uh the two links are there on our screen as well so please check that out at sharecare.com or if you're a healthnet member healthnet.sharecare.com next slide please all right so our next webinar is november 20th and the title is loneliness and your health loneliness is more than just being alone and socially isolated this webinar explains the symptoms of loneliness and tips on how to feel better and improve your health. So I really hope you can join us next month on November 20th. Next slide. All right, thank you so much for your time today. We please uh, join our monthly wellness webinars. They're usually on the third Wednesday of each month from 12 to 1245. I do know our December webinar will be on the second Wednesday due to the holidays, um, but otherwise they're usually on the third Wednesday from 12 to 12.45. So I'd like to thank you all for joining us today. And thank you, Mikhail, our ASL interpreter for joining us and Katie once again for joining us and providing this valuable information to us. All right, I hope you all do well and have a great afternoon. Thank you. Thank you, you too. Thanks for having me.